Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O all holy trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master, pardon our transgressions. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. <coughs> Amen. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. O come, let us worship God our King. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ our King and our God. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ himself, our King and our God. Hearken, O Lord, unto my righteousness, attend unto my supplication, give ear unto my prayer, which cometh not from deceitful lips. From before thy face let my judgment come forth, let mine eyes behold a brightness. Thou hast proved my heart, thou hast visited in the night, thou hast tried me by fire, and unrighteousness was not found in me. That my mouth might not speak of the works of men, for the sake of the words of thy lips have I kept thy ways that are hard. Set my footsteps in thy paths, that my steps might not be shaken. I have cried for other hours, hearken unto me, O God, incline thine ear unto me, and hearken unto my words. Let thy mercies be made wonderful, O thou that savest them that hope in thee. From them that have resisted thy right hand, keep me, O Lord, as the apple of thine eye. In the shelter of thy wings wilt thou shelter me from the face of the ungodly which have oppressed me. Mine enemies have surrounded my soul. They have enclosed themselves with their own fat. Their mouth has spoken pride. They that cast me out have now encircled me. They have set their eyes to look askance on the earth. They have taken me as my lion ready for his prey, and as my lion's wealth that dwelleth in hiding. Arise, O Lord, and overtake them and trip their heels. Deliver my soul from ungodly men, thy sword from the enemy of thy hand. O Lord, from thy few do thou separate them from the earth and their life. Yea, with their, thy hidden treasures hath their belly been filled. They have satisfied themselves with swine and left the remnants to their babes. But as for me, in righteousness shall I appear before thy face. I shall be filled when thy glory is made manifest to me. Unto thee, O God, have I lifted up my soul, and my God in thee have I trusted. Let me never be put to shame, nor let my enemies laugh me to scorn. Yea, let none that wait on thee be put to shame. Let them be ashamed which are lawless without a cause. Make thy ways, O Lord, known unto me, and teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art God my Savior. For on thee have I waited all the day long. Remember all thy compassions, O Lord, and thy mercies, for they are from everlasting. The sins of my youth and my ignorance is remember not. According to thy mercy, remember thou me, for the sake of thy goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he set a law for them that sin in the way. He will guide the meek in judgment. He will teach the meek his ways. All the ways of the Lord are mercy and truth unto them that seek after his covenant and his testimonies. For the sake of thy name, O Lord, be gracious unto my sin, for it is great. Who is the man that feareth the Lord? He will set him a law in the way which he hath chosen. His soul shall dwell among good things, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The Lord is the strength of them that fear him, and his covenant shall be manifested unto them. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he it is that will draw my feet out of the snare. Look upon me, and have mercy on me, for I am one only begotten and poor. The afflictions of my heart are multiplied. Bring me out from my necessities. Behold my lowliness and my toil, and forgive all my sins. Look upon mine enemies, for they are multiplied, and with an unjust hatred have they hated me. Keep my soul and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have hoped in thee. The innocent and the upright cleaved unto me, for I waited on thee, O Lord. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his afflictions. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy compassions, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my iniquity, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil before thee, that thou mightest be justified in thy words, and prevail when thou art judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and sins did my mother bear me. 
For behold, thou hast loved the truth the love truth the secret and hidden things of thy wisdom thou hast made manifest unto me thou shalt sprinkle me with hyssop and i shall be made clean thou shalt wash me and i shall be made whiter than so thou shalt make me to hear joy and gladness the bones that be humbled they shall rejoice turn thy face away from my sins and blood out all my iniquities create in me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy holy spirit from me Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and with thy governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou hast desired sacrifice, I have given it. With whole burnt offerings, I should not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit, a heart that is broken and humble, God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, in thy good pleasure unto Zion, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then shall thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with oblations and old burnt offerings. Then shall thou offer bullocks upon thine altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. By thy cross thou didst destroy death, to the thief thou didst open paradise. For the myrrh bearers thou didst change weeping into joy, and thou didst command thy disciples, O Christ God, to proclaim that thou art risen, granting the world great mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, let us who love their words come together with hymns and honor the three great torchbearers of the triune Godhead, Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian, and John Chrysostom. These men have enlightened the world with the rays of their divine doctrines. They are sweetly flowing rivers of wisdom and have filled all creation with springs of heavenly knowledge. They ceaselessly intercede for us before the Holy Trinity. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. O Theotokos, thou art the true vine who has budded forth the fruit of life. We entreat thee, O sovereign lady, intercede together with the holy apostles, that he may be merciful to our souls. Blessed is the Lord God, blessed is the Lord day by day. The God of our salvation shall prosper us along the way. Our God is the God of salvation. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O all holy trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master, pardon our transgressions. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, Lord, Lord heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, be on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. thou hast taken up to eternal rest and to the enjoyment of thy blessings the divinely inspired heralds the greatest of thy teachers for thou hast accepted their labors and deaths as a sweet smelling sacrifice for thou alone art glorified in thy saints lord have mercy 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 Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Thou who at every season and every hour in heaven and on earth art worshipped and glorified, O Christ our God, who art long suffering, merciful, and compassionate, who lovest the just and showest mercy upon the sinner, who callest all to salvation through the promise of blessings to come. O Lord, in this hour receive our supplications and direct our lives according to thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, hallow our bodies, correct our thoughts, cleanse our minds, deliver us from all tribulations, evil, and distress. 
compass us about with thy holy angels that guided and guarded by them, we may attain to the unity of the fi thy faith and, the and to the knowledge of thine unapproachable glory. For thou art blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without corruption thou gavest birth to God the Word. Truth, Theotokos, we magnify thee. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. Amen. O Master God, Almighty Father, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and O Holy Spirit, one God, head and one power, have mercy on me, a sinner, and by the judgment which thou hast established, save me, thine unworthy servant, <clears throat> for thou art blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. O come, let us worship God our King. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ our King and our God. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ himself our King and our God. O God, in thy name, save me, and in thy strength do thou judge me. O God, hearken unto my prayer, give ear unto the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and mighty men have sought after my soul, and have not set God before themselves. For behold, God helpeth me, and the Lord is the protector of my soul. He will bring evils upon mine enemies, utterly destroy them by thy truth. Willingly shall I sacrifice unto thee, I will confess thy name, O Lord, for it is good. For out of every affliction hast thou delivered me, and mine eye hath looked down upon mine enemies. Give ear, O God, unto my prayer, and disdain not my supplication. Attend unto me, and hear me. I was grieved in my meditation. I was troubled at the voice of the enemy, at the oppression of the sinner. Because they have turned iniquity upon me, and with wrath are they angry against me. My heart is troubled within me, and the terror of death has fallen upon me. Fear and trembling are come upon me, and darkness hath covered me. And I said, Who will give me wings like a dove, and I will fly away and be at rest? Lord, I have fled afar off, and I have dwelt in the wilderness. I waited for God that saveth me from faint-heartedness and from tempest. Plunge them into the depths, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen iniquity and gainsaying in the city. Day and night they go round about her upon her walls. Iniquity and toil and unrighteousness are in the midst of her. And usury and deceit have not departed from her streets. For if mine enemy had reviled me, I might have endured it. And if he that hateth me had spoken boastful words against me, I might have hid myself from him. But thou it was, O man of like soul with me, my God and my familiar friend, thou who together with me to sweeten my repast. In the house of God I walked with thee in oneness of mind. Let death come upon such ones, and let them go down alive into Hades. For wickedness is in their dwellings, and in the midst of them, as for me unto God have I cried, and the Lord hearken unto me. Evening, morning, and noonday will I tell of it, and will declare it, and he will hear my voice. He will redeem my soul in peace, and then that draw nigh to me, for they among many were with me. God will hear, and he will humble them, he that is before the ages. For to them there is no requital, because they have not feared God. He has stretched forth his hand in retribution. They have defiled his covenant. They were scattered by the wrath of his countenance, and their hearts have convened. Their words were smoother than oil, and yet they are darts. Cast thy care upon the Lord, and he will nourish thee. He will never permit the righteous to be shaken. But thou, O God, shall bring those men down to the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. But as for me, O Lord, I will hope in thee. He that dwelleth in the help of the Most High shall abide in the shelter of the God of heaven. He shall say unto the Lord, Thou art my helper and my refuge. He is my God, and I will hope in him. For he shall deliver thee from the snare of the hunters and from every troubling word. With his shoulders he will overshadow thee, and under his wings shall thou have hope. With the shield was truth encompass thee. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the air that flieth by day, nor for the thing that walketh in darkness nor for the mishap and demon of noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. <coughs> Unto thee it shall not come nigh, only with thine eyes shall thou behold, and thou shalt see the reward of sinners. For thou, O Lord, art my hope, thou madest the most high thy refuge. No evil shall come nigh, shall come nigh unto thee, and no scourge shall draw nigh unto thy dwelling. For he shall give his, own, his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. On their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Upon the ass and the back scorn shall thou tread, and thou shalt trample upon the lion and the dragon. For he has set his hope in me, and I will deliver him. I will shelter him, because he hath known my name. He shall cry unto me, and I will hearken unto him. I am with him in affliction, I will rescue him and glorify him. With length of days will I satisfy him, and I will show him my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> 
By thy cross thou dost destroy death, to the thief thou dost open paradise. For the myrrh bearers thou dost change weeping into joy, and thou dost command thy disciples, O Christ God, to proclaim that thou art risen, granting the world great mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us who love the words come together with hymns and honor the three great torch bearers of the triune God. Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian, and John Chrysostom, these men have enlightened the world with the rays of their divine doctrines. They are sweetly flowing rivers of wisdom and have filled all creation with springs of heavenly knowledge. They ceaselessly intercede for us before the Holy Trinity, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. <clears throat> As we have no boldness on account of the multitude of our sins, O Virgin Theotokos, intercede with him who is born of thee, for much more is the prayer of a mother able to incline the master into kindheartedness. Despise not the supplications of sinners, O all pure one, for merciful and strong to save is he who condescended to suffer for us. Let thy compassions quickly go before us, O Lord, for we are become exceedingly poor. Help us, O God, our Savior, for the sake of the glory of thy name. O Lord, deliver us, make gracious unto our sins for thy name's sake. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us, O Lord, cleanse us from our sins, O Master, pardon our transgressions. O Holy One, visit and hear our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. The dominion of death can no longer hold men captive, for Christ ascended, shattering and destroying its powers. Hell is bound while the prophets rejoice and cry. The Savior has come to those in faith. Enter you faithful into the resurrection. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Thou who at every season and every hour, in heaven and on earth, art worshiped and glorified, O Christ our God, O our long suffering, merciful and compassionate, who lovest the just and showest mercy upon the sinner, who callest all to salvation through the promise of blessings to come. O Lord, this hour receive our supplications and direct our lives according to thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, hallow our bodies, correct our thoughts, cleanse our minds, deliver us from all tribulations, evil and distress. Compass us about with thy holy angels, that guided and guarded by them. We may attain to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of thine unapproachable glory. For thou art blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without corruption, thou gavest birth to God the Word. Truth, Theotokos, we magnify thee. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. Through the prayer of our holy <clears throat> fathers, the Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen. O God and Lord of hosts and maker of all things created, who through the tender-hearted compassion of thine incomparable mercy did send down thine only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the salvation of our race and by his precious cross to destroy the handwriting of our sins, and is thereby triumph over the origin and powers of darkness. Do thou the same Lord who lovest mankind receive also these thanksgivings and fervent prayers of us sinners, and deliver us from every harmful and gloomy transgression and fall from all enemies, both visible and invisible, who seek after us to destroy us, nail our flesh with the fear of thee, and incline not our hearts towards the thoughts of wickedness. But wound our souls with the love of thee, that looking ever unto thee, and guided by thee in the light, beholding thee, the light ineffable and everlasting, we may ascribe unto thee ceaseless confession and thanksgiving, unto thee, an originate Father, together with thine only begotten Son, and thine all holy, good, and life-creating Spirit, 
now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen.
thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have been. Put not your trust in
erased the record of Adam's ancient sin and has saved the whole human race from deception. Wherefore we hymn thee, o, o Lord and benefactor. Blessed are you and shall we bow you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. The great clarion of the church, the beacon illumining the whole world, the preacher embracing all the ends of the earth with his proclamation, Basil of great renown, Moveth this assembly. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Lo, the light of the world shineth upon the world. Behold, the salt of the earth sweeteneth the earth. Lo, the tree of life produces the fruits of immortality. O holy Chrysostom, come ye who desire to escape death, and find ye delight.
and now the glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Spirit, the Prochemon on it in the seventh tone, the Lord shall give strength to his people, the Lord shall bless his people with peace. Offer to the Lord, O you sons of God, offer your young rams to the Lord. In the eighth tone, their proclamation has gone out into all the earth, and their words to the ends of the universe. Their proclamation has gone out into all the earth, and their words to the ends of the universe. The reading is from the first epistle of the Holy Apostle Paul to Timothy. My son Timothy, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am first. Before this cause have I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all longsuffering, as a pattern to them which should believe in him unto life everlasting. Now to the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, and the most, only most wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Remember your preceptors who have spoken to you the word of God and considering the outcome of this life, follow their faith. Jesus Christ yesterday, today, and the same forever. Do not be led away with various and strange doctrines, for it is best that the heart be established by grace, not with meats which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle have no right to eat. For the bodies of those beasts, whose blood is brought un into the holies by the high priest for sin, are burned outside the camp. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people by his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him, outside the camp, bearing his reproach. 
For here we have no lasting city, but we seek that one, the one that is to come. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise always to God, that is to say, the fruit of our lips, confessing to his name. And do not forget to do good and to share, for by such sacrifices God is well pleased. And to thy spirit, alleluia, 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 it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the na thy name, O Most High. to declare thy mercy in the morning and thy truth by night. Amen. The heavens will praise thy wonders, O Lord, and thy truth in the congregation of the saints. Amen. Chrysostom, 
all of whom lived in the uh, 4th century. St. Basil the Great um, is, was, uh, just to give you a little brief overview of his life, St. Basil the Great was born around 330 and somewhat of an uh, aristocrat, however, raised by a very pious Christian family. And of his family, uh, another four individuals, or I believe three individuals, are saints within his family. Gregory of Nyssa is one of them, his, his mother, and anyway, so he was brought up piously Christian. However, interestingly enough, at that time, especially in his class, it was very common not to baptize your children. You would raise them Christian, but you would wait until they were in their mid-twenties, essentially until they had sowed their wild oats, so to speak, and then they would be baptized or more dedicated in the church. So St. Basil was given, given the best education, and he saw piety his whole life, and he became a great uh, public speaker, um, also the equivalent, a little bit of the equivalent of what we would say as a lawyer, um, going to some of the best schools that could be gone to at that time, um, learning, uh, well, I mean, particularly emphasizing his ability to sp public speak and rhetoric and those in philosophy. And he had all that, and he was good at it, but it sounds like in somewhere around his mid-twenties, he had an experience in his room where a divine visitation, the very light of God, overshadowed him, and he was given a choice to con con continue with the life that he was living, which was dedicated to essentially worldly glory, to obtaining wealth, to be continuing within his class, uh, his aristocrat cl uh, catech class, whatever, however, you know, I don't do English well. <laughs> or it's too early, we should have never. Um, so he has this revelation and he repents. This is his conversion experience. And having read the Gospels and being well aware of them, one of the first thoughts he has is, well, in the Gospels, there's a lot of people who get rid of everything they have and follow Christ. And so he gave away everything and he followed Christ. And in his life, he was famous for founding hospitals, founding orphanages, uh, founding uh, monasticism, being one of the founding fathers of the monastic practices of that time. For uh, in his, all the skills he learned in the world were used, as a, uh, he actually was one of the people who was negotiating between the Arians and the Orthodox before the Second Ec Ecumenical Council to try to find some sort of compromise. And he passed away before the Second Ecumenical Council, and of course, um, but his effort was, was known. And his sanctity was celebrated within his life. St. Gregory the Theologian has a little bit of a similar story. He's raised and he's educated. I don't believe, um, I believe his father, excuse me, I'm mixing my saints up here. Um, there's three today, so I'm not supposed to mix them up. Um, he is, just like St. Basil, educated. Uh, he is top of his class, so to speak. Philosophy, rhetoric. Um, again, speaking, uh, being a lawyer, being able to um, uh, litigate and stuff, which is all this is oratory stuff, but also very clearly has a heart of a poet. Now, St. Gregory in, uh, impulsively decides to go to Greece, where he wants to learn some more, and he gets stuck on a ship. And for 20 days, he's, it says that he's stuck at sea on the ship. Um, the way he relates it, because he tells his story, actually, and writes it down, is that the fresh water was knocked off the ship somewhere in the storm. And so for many, many days, they were without fresh water. And for 20 days, they were being tossed about like they were in a washing machine with total blackness, lightning. Needless to say, St. Gregory has a conversion experience. 
He sees his life, as they say, when you're dying, your life flashes before you. He sees this, and something in his heart says that he needs to dedicate himself to the church and dedicate him to a life of service of Christ. And he prays his prayer, he has this moment, and the storm ends very briefly the next day. He goes and he fulfills, he ends up being the patriarch of Constantinople. At one time he presides over the Second Ecumenical Council. He's a poet, but he's also salty, meaning that he, I, one of my memories from seminary was the professor reading one of his farewell or orations to the Second Ecumenical Council because he left someone in protest maybe, but definitely frustrated because it wasn't going the way he thought it should go. And essentially within his uh, oration, he lets them know how he feels about the bishops. So, you know, in a poetic way, of course, you know, <laughs> in a poetic way. He goes on in his life to retire and write poetry, and he's called a theologian because within his writings and within his poetry, we have some of the clearest and most beautiful expressions of the Trinity, of our belief about the three persons of the Trinity, and of the experience of what it means to encounter God. And that is St. John, the theologian, one of the reasons why he's given the title theologian. Anything that you read by him is profitable and beautiful and, and well done, even in most, even in translation. St. John Chrysostom is unique in that he is, seems to be not only raised a Christian, but there's no mention of a later conversion or <coughs> baptism. His father dies at a young age, and he's left with his mother, and again, as an aristocrat, is educated. He's not educated in Athens, but he's educated in Antioch. And in his education, he again becomes a great public speaker. At one time in the church, at a young age, he is called forth to be a priest. And the story says that he ran away from it. That he actually fled so that he wouldn't be ordained a priest. And if you read the story, it's kind of funny because he was going with two people he knew, friends. So they went and got ordained. That he disappeared. Yes. <laughs> he wanted to be a monastic. But he had a mother, and so he cared for his mother until she reposed. He went on to be a monastic, but was so strict with himself, he hurt himself. Over time and over his career as a priest, and then, as, and then he became the patriarch of Constantinople. He's called Chrysostom, which means golden tongue golden mouth, because he was able to eloquently preach. His homilies are both, um, they're very beautiful. I mentioned the other day in a sermon that um, on the weekday uh, that, that St. John Chrysostom's homilies, when you read them now, are very applicable to our lives. And you can kind of get a snapshot of the early church. You can see how full they were. And if you think this homily's long, <laughs> sit down and read a homily by St. John Chrysostom and realize they didn't have television back then. <laughs> He's a very forceful personality. He deals with the problem of Arianism within, the, the Constantinople, within Constant, Constantinople. He then eventually is sentenced to death, but is rather exiled, and he dies in exile. The story of today's feast, now, two of our liturgies, we have St. Basil's liturgy, St. John Chrysostom, it's also said that Gregory the Theologian had a liturgy that celebrated in Alexandria. I read that last night, that was the first time I heard it. The story of today's feast is that apparently in the um, 1100s, there was a fight that broke out organically among Christians, 
and it brought me back to my childhood. I, I did a form of karate when I was young, and, um, and in martial arts, it maybe you sung the karate kid or something, but I don't know if you know it, but my karate is better than your karate. <laughs> And there seems to be a general attitude, and I'm, this is partially true and partially joking amongst martial artists, that their style is the best. Well, this same thing happens in the church with sinful people. And so you had some saying, I'm under the John, St. John, I'm a Jonite. I'm a, a Gregory writer, however they said it, and I'm, I follow St. Basil. And somehow took these fathers who had similar skills and similar uh, talents and, and similar ability to, to preach and, and teach and live the faith and somehow pitted them against each other. And it was beginning to create a faction in the church. This became serious enough where it was becoming a, a rather, rather substantial problem. You might remember in the early church, the Apostle Paul has to tell the disciples in his churches that don't say that you follow Paul or Silas or so and so. The faith is about Jesus Christ. It's not about me. So the bishop of that time has a dream and in the dream they come to him, they reveal themselves to him and say, look, we're neither opposed to each other, we're in complete unity and we're in unity in Christ. We love each other. We're not, no saint, neither three of us is better, more powerful, more saintly. This sounds ridiculous to us, but it was what it was. None of them were equal in Christ. The bishop comes back and reports this, and apparently this is the beginning of today's feast day. It's why we celebrate the three hearts together. They also somewhat become a patron, uh, patron saints for education which you'll see especially within uh, in Greece, where, uh, well, we even see it in an OCA at the uh, Saint T uh, Vladimir Seminary, Seminary. They have their three hierarchs chapel because that's a place of, of education. We have, and we have been given many worldly talents. Some of us converted as adults. Some of us are being raised in the church. All of us are going to be exposed to what they would call the treasures of Egypt within the early church. In other words, our society has a lot to educate us with and a lot to give us. But ultimately, we're called, like these three holy hierarchs, to at some point, and we will be challenged to at some point, to prioritize the church and the spiritual life. And to take whatever we've been given, whatever God has given us, whether it's worldly wisdom, or whether it's churchly wisdom, and to put that in action to serve the body of Christ and to serve one another in the body of Christ. They did it with their unique abilities, which were aristocratic, uh, expensive education, and unbelievable talents that may be beyond what most of us have. We do that with the small things or the great things that we've been given. The other lesson that we can take from today's feast, because we live in a very strange time, is that we shouldn't be like the people of the 11th century and begin to pit Christians against Christians. You know, there's a lot of internet personalities. I'm on the internet, actually. Um, I don't have a big following. I don't know why. <laughs> but I did grow my hair out. It didn't work. I tried. Anyways, um... There are a lot of internet personalities, and there are a lot of um, priests, very dedicated priests, um, who, for whatever reason, tend to attract a following. And in our sinful nature, it's unfortunate, you know, I don't know, you go back to the early church, you remember that Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles, Peter's apostle to the Jews, and occasionally they argued. But ultimately, they were one. They were together. They weren't opposed to each other. But in our modern age, oftentimes, it seems as though personalities oppose one another. 
We say, we hear people say the OCA is bad, the Greek church is good, the Russian church is bad, the Ukraine, and go into these sorts of polemics and then tie it to teaching. And we have to recognize that whatever creates disorder in the church is sin. That it comes from an egotistical place, that it's not healthy. So, like St. John and St. Gregory and St. Basil, our fathers, the holy fathers of our day and age, need to present themselves as unified in Christ, pursuing a common goal, the sanctification in our salvation. And as Christians, as pious Christians, we need to be able to discern and realize that we follow Christ and that we are not about following personalities. Because it's when we follow personalities that we begin to oppose each other. When we follow Christ, we are following what the fathers were following when they're pursuing. So, may these three holy hearts pray for us and help us to use our gifts and talents that we've been given to build up the church. May we have the same conversion experience as St. Basil and St. Um, Gregory. And may we be given the ability to discern and to see through some of the various personalities of our times and to squarely put our trust in Christ and pursue Him at all costs so that we can become sanctified and glorified with these saints as well. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be. Let us say with our soul and our mind, let us say. God of our fathers, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy. We pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Metropolitan Teacon, for our Archbishop. Alexander and for our brethren in Christ. Again, we pray for this country, its president, for all civil authorities, and for the armed forces. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever memorable holy orthodox patriarchs and for the blessed and ever memorable founders of this holy church and for all our fathers and brethren the orthodox depart this life before us who here in all the world lie asleep in the Lord. <laughs> mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, and visitation for the servants of God, Linnea, George, George, Billy, Marina, Kimberly, Paul, Trey, Bridget, Ray, Esme, Mariana, Johnny, Heather, Tiffany, Chris, Andrew, Jessica, Jessica, Sarah, Tammy, and Elena, and the brethren of this holy temple, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Senor Tendeta, Senor Tendeta, Senor Tendeta. Again we pray thee, O Lord our God, that thou mightest mercifully protect us from the devastating pestilence stirred up against us, and deliver thy faithful people from spiritual and physical death. Grant unto the sick healing and health, and unto all of us thy divine protection and help. We pray thee, O kind-hearted Lord, quickly hear us and have mercy. Again, we pray thee that thou mightest pacify the troubles of men, and every fearful thing compasses thy faithful about with a firm hope, 
and instill in our hearts quietude. We pray thee, O Lord, hearken and have mercy. Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all venerable temple, for those who labor and those who sing, and all the people here present who await thy great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For thou art a merciful God and lovest mankind, and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Pray to the Lord, you catechumens. Let us, the faithful, pray for the catechumens that the Lord may have mercy on them.
Radar, Metropolitan, Tecon, Artificial Washington, and Metropolitan of all America and Canada. Is that Miss Archbishop Alexander, Archbishop of Dallas, and of all the South? May the Lord God remember his kingdom always sound ever and unto the ages of ages. This country is present and all civil authorities and those who are serving the armed forces around the world. May the Lord God remember his kingdom always sound ever and unto the ages of ages. The founders, benefactors, and beautifiers of this holy house, may the Lord God remember his kingdom always sound ever and unto the ages of ages. The sick, the suffering, the persecuted Christians throughout the whole world, may the Lord God remember his kingdom always sound ever and unto the ages of ages. All those things we have commemorated today depart in this life before us. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always sound ever and unto the ages of ages. You and all Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always sound ever and unto the ages of ages. May the Lord God remember your priesthood in his kingdom always sound.
compassions of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine awfully good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. And to thy spirit. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. Son, and to thy Holy Spirit, for all things which we know and of which we know not, 
and for all the benefits bestowed upon us, whether manifest or unseen. And we thank thee for this liturgy which thou hast deigned to accept at our hands, though there stand beside thee thousands of archangels and hosts of angels, the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged many eyes, who soar aloft over on their pinions, singing the triumphant hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, Holy, Nation, 
Again we offer unto thee this rational worship for those who have fallen asleep in the faith, ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit made perfect in Christ, especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady Theotoko, and ever Virgin Mary. It is truly meet to bless the Omeoto. us worthy 
O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say,
upon you through his grace and love for mankind, Amen. always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, O Christ, God, our hope. Glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In thy name, O Lord God of truth, and in the name of thine only begotten Son, I lay my hands upon the heads of thy servants, Jordan, Joshua, Natalie, Cecilia, Madeline. Henry, Elise, 
who have been found worthy to flee into thy holy name and take refuge under the shelter of thy wings. Remove far from them their former delusions and fill them with faith, hope, and love which are in thee, that they may know that thou art, that thou art the only true God, with thine only begotten Son, and our Lord Jesus Christ, and thy Holy Spirit. Enable them to walk in all thy commandments and to fulfill those things which are well pleasing unto thee. For if a person does these things, he shall find life in them. Inscribe them in thy book of life and unite them to the flock of thine inheritance. And may thy holy name be glorified in them, together that I love thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and of thy life-giving Spirit. Let thine eyes ever regard them with mercy, and let thy ears be attentive unto the voice of their supplications. Make them to rejoice in the work of their hands at all their generation. They may render praises unto thee, and sing, and worship, and glorify thy great and exalted name all the days of their lives. For all the powers of heaven sing praises to thee, and unto thee is thine is the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Please keep them in their journey to orthodoxy and their catechumen in your prayers. May God bless you. Anyone celebrating a birthday or a name today? Uh, anyone named after St. John Chrysostom, Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian, or any birthdays? Oh, that's right. Grant to the Lord a prosperous and peaceful life, and all salvation and hastening in all things. To the handmaiden of God, thus speak ye, the servant of God, John, and the servant of God, Isaac, who celebrate their feast days and birthdays and names days, and preserve them, O Lord, for many years. God bless you. Thank you. 